Welcome to another episode of Musica Maestra. I'm here in Berlin, in my neighborhood, with one of my favorite musicians and neighbor, Amichai Gross. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for getting me out of the apartment in these corona times where it's hard to be moving and I know you like to stay fit. I'm trying to, of course, yeah. So you're going to train me today, get some exercise going? Yeah, I thought, you know, um, we are in Berlin. I think as a musician, it's always important to move. And since the whole corona started, we are moving much less. So I'm trying just to, you know, go outside, have the right clothes and just move a little bit. And it's nice. It's conversation, you know, we can talk and yeah. we can do stuff. And we are neighbors. It's about time. Yes, yeah. I'm very happy. OK, let's go. We start yeah. running or what? Yeah, let's okay. go. Cheers, Drink. Let's, let's cheer to the fact that you're the principal violist of one, the best orchestra in the world. But uh, you're much more than that, and that's what I find very interesting about you. you. How were you as a child? Wow. What kind of child were you? Now that you're a father of two? Well, you know, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure if I changed a lot. <laughs> I'm still kind of a child. I know, yeah. You can say I was, I was very secure with myself among the environment out around me, but, but I think, um, you know, like all of us, I had a lot of small corners, I had dark corners in my, in my childhood that I, I think that the music um, helped me a lot. Basically, you know, I was, I was um, kind of normal, you know, I loved, I played a lot of basketball and football. We were living, still my parents, a little bit outside Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. It's still, of course, part of Jerusalem, but you know, it's basically, it's called Jerusalem Mountain. So it was, um, it was all nature for me. When we started, I was um, 14 years old. The school of the quartet, in that age, it's part of my DNA. It's not something I can say I learned. It's just who I am. Mm. This listening, this playing together, this, this, this repertoire, you know, it's like, it's like the creme de la creme. I was 14 and we started to play and after one year we already, we understood that there's something very special there um, because we started to play like official concerts mm. in Israel. And then, after a year and a half, we went to Schubert uh, competition in Graz. We won the first place. Why did you decide to go from being a soloist and chamber musician to suddenly being part of a big uh, well, mass? It's a very personal decision. The main issue for me was the quartet, and the quartet is still amazing. It's like one of the top quartet, and they are still mm -hmm. playing, and I'm, you know, we're still in contact. It's, it was nothing among the quartet itself. With the, with the, with the, with the, they are like my brothers, yeah. And I started to feel, after 18 years, 18 in the quartet, you know, I left when I was oh, 17, 31, 32, and I said to myself, you know, it's very cool, but maybe I want to do something else in my life. But just to be honest, I, I, I won the audition, my second audition, not the first one. I went on the first one and I was alone in the final and there was, of course, a mutual interest. But, you know... I second audition, two auditions. That's very good for people to hear because I think for, for young musicians who are aspiring, mm -hmm. you know, everybody, we all see the Berlin Philharmonic as this Olympus that you're yeah, saying. And, and when we hear that someone like you had to try twice. That's, that, I think that's really great because that's, no one is uh, born knowing and no one has it for, for sure. I was so nervous. I bet. And if you are not nervous, it's not your place. 
you should be nervous. Mm. You should let the nervosity create something else because mm. when you're not nervous, you don't create. Mm. What do you want to be? Like not nervous? So the question is physically and psychologically, what do you, you can develop tools, and I'm not saying I'm mastering it, but you are supposed to develop tools to live with this. be the feeling that you're sitting in a rehearsal and there's a conductor and there's sometimes conductors that you adore others that you really don't don't like what they're doing or what they're deciding how do you deal with going with the decisions of another person that go against what you want and still make it work and how do you cope with that uh, because I think that's what a lot of orchestral players must be living on very the time. easy for me how? Um, for me it's my my duty as a principal is I'm a bridge between the conductor and the group. Mm. Not less and not more. Mm. And my job, thanks God, I think I, I kind of have it in my DNA, is to see and even to think how the conductor will react. Mm. And then I'm reacting like this. You have to really demolish your ego. There are like tons of, of times that I'm like, what, why? <laughs> how it's too slow, you know. Mm -hmm. But then when you, when you really catch yourself and say, okay, wait, this is not my, it's not my decision to decide. I am, again, I'm this kind of, you know, bridge. You know, when the conductor is wanting to show you something, if you cannot translate it a little bit physically and just emotionally to the group in a way, then you don't do your job well. Yes. Tell me about how it is to live here and the community of Israeli musicians and how that fits into Berlin and the history of Germany, which of course is... I think most of my friends were, were, were here, you know, like studying. So of course now they get jobs, so some of them left to this, uh, but, but everybody was here. And I think this is so cool because this is Berlin. I mean, it has a tradition. It has really, really tradition of, of you know, of history. For the good and for the bad, of course, yeah. Um, but it's such an open metropolitan, you know. Um, and I remember the first time I was here, I was like, whoa, you know, east, west. You go to visit the east a little bit and it's like completely, whew, and you go west Berlin and it's like, okay, this is something I know. It, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of, it's a freaky city. I love it. <laughs> 